Check it out, today we've got a review of the Jiffy Cap. Now this is a throwback cap that's actually being reproduced nowadays. It originally came on some oven cleaner, and thanks to the power of YouTube, I actually found an old advertisement from the original cans. Some pretty janky stuff, but nonetheless, I'm excited to try this out. It's got quite the low profile. It probably sits about the third the height of a normal spray paint cap. It's a little bit smaller on the can, and for that reason, it's said to have maybe a little bit less pressure onto your fingers, so you might be able to paint for a little bit longer, have a little better longevity and less fatigue on those fingers and not to mention it also seems to have a pretty good range these were originally used as some wider caps so big fill-ins and kind of a flare style cap but now that most of our cans feature variable pressure we're also going to be able to utilize this for some skinny lines so from the description this caps claiming a wide array of performance I'm excited to see what that works out and definitely a big shout out to bombing science for supporting this video and sending these caps over I'll have links where you can head over to bombingscience.com and actually check these caps out and remember as always the opinions expressed here are are my own throughout the video they're, they're solely built on the performance of these caps on a variety of cans so let's get into it and see how they work out so I'm gonna start in on the review with some flamingo red from fresh paint this is gonna be a nice middle of the road on the little higher pressure side nice coverage as well as a lot of pigment coming through the cap see if it clogs it up or anything as well as we'll see how that higher output works for it just for starters the cap seems has a pretty low profile on top of the can it actually sits pretty nicely under my figure so hopefully those statements about it being easier to use and having a little bit more longevity while spraying doesn't tie your finger out as fast are gonna hold true so if you can see at the top of the I and V there's a little bit of potential for some nice flares in there maybe we'll bump it up and try to really stretch those out next time but good coverage all in all the red looks real nice popping off those lighter surfaces and you can also see at the bottom of the E we got some really kind of skinny lines so let's see if this is gonna be that versatile cap that can get all the way from skinny upwards to fat so very similar style can we got iron lac here this is in a black color but it's at the end of its life so it might be a little bit on the lower pressure side so it's interesting to see that this dripped quite a bit more. The paint definitely is a little bit thinner than the fresh paint that we tried first off. I would have to say that this might also come down to the fact that it is a little bit lower pressure. It's not having as much spray to come out and expel the paint. I have a feeling that has to do with the original cans that these were designed for. We're probably loaded up with pressure, totally ready to go and expel all their cleaning products. So let's try some newer cans, see if the higher pressure ends up kind of resolving this really big dripping issue. Now we got a can of Montana black in a light blue color. Let's see how this works out. You can see a little bit more consistent coverage here. We do have some kind of softer dusting that happens around here. It's not quite a flare as it's not consistent. I would say my hand probably was rotated out a little bit, so you were flaring up a teeny bit. But then here up at the top, we've got more of the natural flare. It almost seems like the paint is being restricted as it comes out. It seems with a lot of newer caps, you're actually getting quite a bit of a hiss as the paint comes out so fast and direct. Here it seems a lot softer and almost more spread out. You can see the fading up here is super soft, and so you're getting those soft lines, but you're also getting these consistent lines but as you get these kind of closer tighter things you're gonna have a lot more likelihood that you're actually gonna end up dripping and whatnot you can see we almost caught a drip up here on the top of the T as well now let's go for something a little bit on the lower pressure side we got some iron lac sugar here should work pretty well also in a black color so the paint seems to be coming out pretty much the same volume, so maybe we are maxing it out in the fact that all these cans are able to produce the same amount of paint, but I'm definitely seeing a thinner line. I still have to move pretty quick to keep it from dripping, and a little bit of variability in the line width up top of the P. Didn't get it quite the same on the R, so let's see if we can get some bigger flares out of the lower pressure can. So by moving a little bit further away from the wall, we're definitely able to get some more flares with this, utilizing that softer side. I think I'm going to have to keep that strategy during the actual painting session for this. It doesn't seem like as we get closer, we're just going to see too many of those little drips. This seems like it collects pretty fast. So maybe I should have kept with the assumption that this is more of a fat cap, so that it is going to be a little bit tailored towards a further distance, as well as it's going to have a little bit higher output. So while we're on the low pressure stuff, let's try out some Montana Gold. I'm enjoying this for some medium sized tags, nothing too crazy large. And on the smaller side, we're able to get some pretty linear lines. They're pretty straight and consistent in size. I definitely think you're going to be able to take care of those variable pressure valves as long as you move as fast as you can, pretty much. These lines are going to collect pretty fast, so maybe in a piece we'll see how my outline works out. But definitely the larger size stuff is really holding strong. This is a super soft cap. Seems to hold the output as well throughout all these different sizes of lines. Let's see how our friend Belton Molotov works out on this guy.
Also came up on a can of white line synthetic, so let's see how this works out. So remember correctly, this is kind of that medium pressure as well, higher opacity and whatnot, kind of just a ton of pigment packed into the can. Last up we got some old school Spanish hardcore, this stuff's probably pretty low pressure, so we'll see if we can get some tight lines in there, and then let's see what kind of flares we can get out of it. Now this Spanish Montana is easily the best performing out of all of these. I felt like the can control was beyond perfect. The straight lines saw no buildup of paint like we saw in the other stuff. The pigment in this old Spanish Montana was some really top level stuff. You can see the bottom tag with a little bit of flares, all those came out like super butter, real thick but no pressure to have to move any faster than you really wanted to. You can see we've got a little bit of opacity lightening up on the bottom section. That area of the canvas is a little less prime so we might see it set in a little bit more. I'm definitely going to use this as the highlight in my piece in the end so we'll see if it's opacity holds up over those colors and we'll kind of come back to that and see if that holds true or if it's actually just fine and the canvas was soaking it in a little bit too much. Now this can was probably produced almost five years ago, it's just kind of laying around in the stash, so I'm not sure what the new hardcores work in comparison to these old guys, but these things were pretty top of the line back in the day, so I'm sure the new stuff is just all the same. I definitely recommend trying the Jiffy out with some of these, just super crisp, and it really just felt like I could smoothly tag freely without any issue about speed, as well as the coverage was just coming out perfect. So thankfully the closest stuff we've got to the old school paint is definitely the hardware store style, so we've got some quick color here, and then I also got a can of color place, so let's give it a test on these kind of old school style valves, a little bit watery of a style, see how it holds up for those. So we got a little bit of leaking on the quick color, I'm gonna give it a go anyways and see if I can hold it up right and see just how it sprays even though we got a little bit of leaking. Doesn't seem like it's gonna get a nice fit on top, it's pretty loose up there. It's pretty much as expected, you kind of have a sloppy edge to the line, but definitely a little wider size, you can get something working out if you really absolutely need to here. So this slight slit here is what's actually leaking when you are pressing down a little bit too far forward on the cap. With the premium cans, you're not going to see that as it's a tight enough snug that it actually covers up that section. But on these other fitting valves, like the quick color, you're going to see that leak a little bit. So to avoid that while I was actually tagging, if you focus more on the back side of the cap, it'll actually make sure that that area is a little bit more depressed in there, so it covers that hole up. I was able to get a tag without much extra leaking on top of the can, so just keep that in mind. Definitely not ideal, you have to kind of baby this one, but if in the end of the day you need it to work, you can make it happen. Now I got the color place. Similar story. See if we can even get it without leaking. Uh, it doesn't look like it. We'll give it a test anyways. Now this cap's already started to perform in a wide array of line sizes. We got some medium sized flares all the way down to some pretty small acute lines. So I'm excited to see how this works out in the piece. Now by no means are those medium fill sizes going to blast out an area and be able to fill something in super fast, but for working on a piece that's about 5 or 6 feet tall, it seems to be totally sufficient at filling that area in with ease and accuracy. And I'm eager to get in and describe how just efficiently this is able to use that variable pressure on the valve. It seems like I have a lot more dexterity with how much pressure I'm applying onto the top of the can. Not only is the top of the jiffy a lot wider than your traditional cap, it seems that that lower profile allows you to kind of get that small touch on top of the can. That small touch is going to let you get those super skinny lines while not putting too much pressure on that valve. When you don't have to be so extreme with the pressure you're putting on top of the valve, it's much easier to get that lower variability with the valve. That kind of goes into my biggest complaint about modern skinny caps. I can't complain about the size of the line, but I do complain a little little bit about the fact that you still have to move super fast when you're trying to work with them. It's far less common for a skinny cap to also have that softer edge where you can move kind of deliberately slow and really make sure your lines are precise. I was super surprised while doing my first fills I was able to get nearly perfect cuts right over top of my base sketch outline. Now like I mentioned it fills pretty efficiently and the first blast of the outline seemed to cover just nicely. I want to take a quick second to show some of these skinny lines I was able to get. I really enjoy filling this piece with the fresh paint and that jiffy cap on top just has that variability that you're able to get these quick cuts in there but also you know still maintain your original outline and it seems as my can gets actually lower pressure it's much easier to manage so unlike some of those lower pressure cans that started out that seemed like it was spitting a little bit and it was producing a little bit too much paint these higher pressure cans as they reduce you're, you're still getting that same pigment output but it's slowing down quite a bit so you're able to actually tailor in these really tight lines so let's see how it works out with the outline the first go with my black outline was way more accurate than I'm used to with a traditional skinny cap. This is all on top of the fact that I haven't painted outside for a couple months. I did those few indoor reviews with the stencil caps over the winter time. This is my first spring piece in the backyard so it's interesting to see that I was able to come up with these really nice results.
results even after being a little rusty. Now thinking of what a perfect cap would be, it would be something that you can actually range from the skinniest line all the way to a super fat line. Now although the Jivy cap might not hit that super upper end of fat caps, it's holding super strong for that medium and skinny line. I really can't say that I would need much of a smaller line for a piece this size. Like I mentioned earlier, the piece is probably about 5 feet tall, and to be fair, that's probably about the smallest piece size I normally do. Granted, you can get smaller, but the amount of work that goes into actually compacting this down and using skinnier lines and using smaller caps seems like a ton of extra work compared to just using this one jiffy cap at this size. You're getting some solid outlines, you're also getting some solid cutbacks, and not to mention you're being able to just leave them all on the can the entire time. So I took a little pause from painting earlier because I saw that the white that I was using that I love so much started spitting a ton. Two things for that, I think the paint was settling into the cold temperature outside, it's about 40 degrees, and two, we can see that it was kind of misting around, it might have been a little bit due to the wind. So let's hope that uh, the sun that came out, I let the cans warm up back inside, and we'll have to keep pushing the canvas down, but the wind hasn't settled, so we'll see how this works out. Excited to finish it out. When working through a piece, it's really common to work with the larger caps at first, get your fill-ins and whatnot, and then work in with the smaller caps, getting those finer details. Now you really just don't even have to worry about swapping out caps any time throughout your piece. And so that goes without saying, it's going to work a little bit faster to get your whole project done, and not to mention you can leave all the same caps on all the cans, you don't have to swap them out in between and really pay too much attention to what's working on the hardware side. The fact that I was able to have that in my back pocket and not have to worry about grabbing the next can knowing that I would be able to get that skinny line or fat line depending on what I needed for each area just kind of gave me a peace of mind to keep working at my pace and keep those creative juices flowing. There wasn't that constant stop and go, checking the top of the cap, making sure you had the skinny one on already, or if you had swapped it out before to get something fatter. So just after letting the paint warm up a little bit and let the outside warm up as well, we're getting some super crisp lines now. No spitting at all between all these colors. This black is once again that sugar, so it's even the lower pressure now. So maybe all the stuff we were seeing earlier was due to that lower temperature, but it's good to see both sides of this. This cap really gives you the ability to get right onto the wall, work right through the piece, and just get the art out as it needs to be. There really doesn't seem to be much back and forth play here working with the cans. You got your colors, you got your wall, and you can really just go at it. I can't really say that I've ever been this impressed with one single cap. It seems like it's just got the leverage of half a toolbox of utilities right in one cap. And not to mention it's got that retro flair to it, so it just adds a little bit of level to your can appeal too. Now if anybody out there has used the Jiffy Cap or something that you can compare to its performance as far as that versatility of small to large, I'd love to hear about that. All the softer style caps that I have used in the past seem to kind of tend on the side to the larger and medium sized stuff without also tailoring themselves down to that small range. The fact that these are on the market right now does give me hope that other caps will kind of follow suit and have a little bit more versatility in how they work as well. Now I definitely can't complain that there are hundreds of different types of caps on the market, but I will say that it is kind of foolish not to have something that can do a little bit of versatility rather than limiting yourself to a whole range of caps in order to get that whole spectrum of lines. Granted, you're definitely probably going to have specialty tools for the extremes, but everything in that mid-range, there should be caps like this that are able to fill that void and be a super utility piece for somebody that just needs one cap and is just looking to practice or just looking to start out. I've got a bigger painting project coming up soon, so I'm definitely going to pick up some more of these and get those using on that wall. And I can especially recommend this to anybody that's trying to learn and try to utilize a variable valve. It was super forgiving and I didn't feel like I was really stressing my finger down to get those variable pressures. It was super easy to get the paint to start flowing. Sometimes the valves on these paints are a little bit hard to get started and by that point you're already pressing down super hard so your starting line can't even be that thin. These seemed really forgiving in how much pressure you were actually needing to press down on the cap to get it started and let alone keep a consistent line. I really didn't find myself having these crazy wonky lines that were sometimes thin, sometimes thick. I found I was able to really just tailor these in and keep the same thickness of line throughout the entire swipe. Like I mentioned earlier, you can pick these up off of bombingscience.com. I'll have direct links to the Jiffy Pack right there. You can get a 25 pack for just 6 bucks, and you can even get a 50 pack for 10 bucks. So these are going to be hard to beat as far as price and quality goes. I really recommend trying these out if you've got some of those more premium paints to use them on. We saw that they work great on the range, and especially once the temperature warmed up, these things were producing smooth lines time and time again. I didn't see any clogging out of all five caps I used throughout this video. I flipped my can over at the end and sprayed them out to make sure to save these guys as their perfect condition. So just keep that in mind, some caps you know you are going to see a little bit of clogging even after doing just a one letter piece here. 
I didn't find any of that with the Jiffy, so a slightly larger size allows them to actually expel that paint. Not much is going to probably get trapped inside. So I kind of gave the iron rack a little hard wrap earlier. It seemed like it was kind of spotty and whatnot. The cold definitely wasn't helping it out too much. We can see that it is still a little beaded in that you're getting these kind of solid hits over here. It's not quite a smooth, even application. This is a pretty old can of iron lac, so that might have something to do with it. But all in all, it's definitely getting those thicker lines now. And it's a little bit more true to what we're seeing with all the other cans. I'd assume a brand new can of iron lac would be able to perform just the same as everything else we saw here. Well, I hope you enjoyed the Jiffy Cap review. If you did, be sure to spray that like button. It's awesome to see that this product met everything it was hyped up to be. This also grows my excitement for some of those other caps I unboxed from Bombing Science just a little while ago. Be sure to head over there if you want to check these caps out, and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I post weekly videos covering the art process or reviewing products, anything really graffiti related that I can get my hands into, it's going up on the channel. Last week I did a live stream for a couple hours, drawing some stickers, taking some name requests, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. And there will also be a random video on screen as well. The description's chock full of information about the video, about the product, and about my channel. Check that out if you haven't already. And be sure to leave a comment down below if the Jiffy Cap is kind of your perfect cap as well. Seems like it fit all my style and all my requirements just so right. So I'm excited to see what you guys think the best kind of cap is. That's going to do it for me guys. Peace.